the recent rescue of thousands of flamingo chicks from the Comfers Dam in Kimberley, another mass rescue is very likely. BirdLife South Africa says conditions at the dam have deteriorated to such an extent that another 5,000 chicks will likely need to be rescued in the coming weeks. Now, BirdLife South Africa CEO Mark Anderson joins us now in studio. Mark, thanks very much for coming in. Yeah. Uh, we were talking off air just a moment ago. You're saying it might happen. We're hoping to avoid it. We're doing all we can to try and find some water to avoid a rescue. I mean, this would be a, you know, an unprecedented action rescuing 5,200 chicks. I don't think we're prepared for it. So, you know, first prize for us is to provide more water to enable the breeding event to continue and the, the chicks to be re reared by their parents and ultimately to fledge from the dam. Tell us about the last rescue. How did that one unfold? So there were some observations, um, I think 23rd of January, um, by the landowner and some concerns about some abandoned chicks. Um, and we scheduled some meetings later that day to try and source water, to try and surround the breeding colony with water. Mm. Um, that obviously doesn't happen overnight. But the following day, the SPCA and other individuals from Kimberley went in and rescued just under 2,000 chicks and near to hatching um, eggs. So the thing about this is, is that the, the, the flamingo chicks are the ones that will be rescued, not necessarily their, pa their, their parents. No, the parents will you know, be, be able to catch them. So the, it'll be the chicks. Oh, There's 5,200 um, unfledged chicks. They, they're flightless. Yeah. They're still dependent on the parents as well. The problem is the dam is drying up very fast. And the, the food source, which is algae, blue-green algae, may go before the dam actually dries up. It'll be a massive undertaking to rescue that large number of chicks and then also to transport them, house them, feed them. You're talking about a rescue operation that is probably few similar rescue operations have ever been undertaken in the world. This is the scale of it. So we're trying to avoid it because it's the absolute last resort. And in terms of uh, waiting until they are able to take care of themselves, how many days or weeks would that take? The, there were different um, cohorts of young birds, so they don't breed that synchronously. So we, we have some fairly large chicks that are already flapping around, even taking gently into the air. Those are some of the older chicks. We've got some very small chicks, which are just a few weeks old. So we think that we need water in the dam for at least the next two months to enable all 5,200 chicks to fledge successfully. So 60 days is what we need? Yeah, at least and 60 And what's the days. rainfall probability looking like? So for the next 15 days, there's zero chance of rain, unfortunately, and we're not sure beyond that. We're trying all in our power to source additional water. In fact, um, a copper mining and the Salt Lake municipality are working right now to try and um, source additional water. And a, a, a canal is being dug today to try and divert some of the water around an extensive area of Phragmites reeds. The reeds absorb a lot of the water. This is 14 megalitres a day that's currently flowing sure. into the dam. So we're trying to get more water into the dam to provide the water and hence the algae in which the birds depend. I mean, these visuals are, are quite telling just in terms of how helpless these chicks are until they get to a certain age. And that's the thing. Um, flamingos are very difficult to rear. I mean, they, firstly, the, the, the chicks are fed something called crop milk by the adults. There's very few birds in the world who have survived when they're young on crop milk. The crop milk is produced by, um, through secretions produced in the esophagus. It's dripped into the chick's beak. And this is done over an extended period. The adult birds eat blue-green algae, all schooled cyanobacteria. So the diet is very um, specific. Yeah. The other thing is the birds are quite fragile. They have very long legs. They're very difficult to rear, unlike other birds. You know, penguins, for example, there was a big penguin rescue um, in 2000, 19 years ago, during the treasure oil spill. Very, very successful rescue operation undertaken by Sankob. But penguins are relatively easier to, to rescue, to rear and release. Flamingos is, presents a massive challenge for us. So given their very specific diet, these chicks, if, let's say, the rescue does need to go, uh, go ahead, uh, you rescue these 5,250 flamingo chicks, how do you go about making sure that they're properly fed? Yeah, well, I mean, the last 2,000 that were rescued, they were transported to facilities around the country. Um, less than half of those survived. Mortalities were expected. I mean, it's very unfortunate. I think the next rescue operation, we expect better success. Um, there's various diets that they, they are fed, very expensive food. Um, the, you need an, an army of volunteers to actually assist. You need a team of veterinarians. Um, and it's a massive undertaking. Um, it's, it's, I mean, the, the volunteers that have assisted with these 2,000 chicks that were originally rescued, I mean, it's commendable all that they've done. 
the interest may be waning a little bit. I mean, it's, this is going on a month. Yeah. You know, people have other lives, they have day jobs, so it's yeah. quite difficult to, to keep that enthusiasm going. So there's, a, there's I think, 900 to 1,000 birds currently in the facilities around the country. But taking in 5,200 sure. brings in lots of challenges on its own. There may be other ways around this, you know, maybe keeping them in an area on the dam, fencing off an area which one pumps in water, provides artificial food. We have a meeting in Kimberley tomorrow, um, very high level meeting, government officials, salt plaque municipalities, some of the veterinarians, some of the captive facilities, National Zoological Gardens will be there, Sand Parks, Game Capture is going to be there, um, BirdLife South Africa and other organisations will be represented. We're going to review the situation currently and, and look at um, the way f forward and particularly start discussing this contingency plan. If we need to rescue, we need to start working very hard to ensure that a, re a successful rescue operation takes place in perhaps a week's time. And, and what would be the cost of a rescue of this magnitude? This is uh, something we don't know, but it's in the millions of rands. It's a multi-million rand project. Yeah, it would be. And I want to ask you just a final question as we wrap. You know, when you get to the stage where these chicks are able to survive, do you try to reunite them with uh, their parents or at least take them back to the Comfort Dam? Yes, so the, um, there is a plan that's been drafted, a repatriation plan to take the birds back into the environment. The idea is that every bird that is you know, healthy and disease-free and physically able will be released back into the wild. First prize was to release, take them back to Campus Dam where they could be um, integrated back into the crash of, of the similar yeah. age birds. They'd stand the best chance of survival. Having birds in captivity there is the possibility of habituation and imprinting as well. We do think that maybe um, successful reintroduction would be enhanced if they were integrated into the large crash of 5,200 chicks. Well, let's hope that we can avoid this relocation at all costs. Yes, Thanks very do. much for coming into studio. Uh, Mark Anderson is the CEO of BirdLife South Africa. There may well be uh, another rescue of flamingo chicks, but uh, uh, steps are being taken to hopefully uh, avoid that in the coming weeks. Uh,